A very good evening to all of you. Very glad to see you all here. And I shall take this particular session forward on insolence. So the first thing that I would like to say as by way of introduction is that initiating insulin is an event in a person's life, in a patient's life. So it's always as if it's a life-changing uh, event in their life. And they feel that if they have made the effort to make this kind of a change in their life, then just starting insulin should be enough to take care of all their problems. What they mean is that, and I'm sure all of you practitioners have come across this, you started or initiated insulin today, and after a week when you call the patient back, you have called the patient back to titrate the dose. However, the patient has come there expecting to see his sugars normal, which means to say that if the education has not been sufficient, a patient thinks that just the act of starting insulin is enough to keep the sugars normal. No, they have already loaded it. They have already loaded it. Yeah. I don't have a PCG. So the question is that we need to make the patient understand that just starting insulin is not enough. Titration is the key. Titration is done in such a way that we achieve our targets. And therefore, once you've started insulin, you may need to keep on increasing the dose. You may need to add another insulin and then bring the patient to goal, and then the patient is going to see some change in the HbA1c, some change in the fasting and the postprandial. So this is the most important part which the patient needs to understand. So before the slides come on, let me uh, tell you here that once you have initiated with basal insulin, because that's what all the guidelines say, once you have initiated insulin, when you want to up titrate, you have a choice of continuing to increase the basal insulin, which may do the job and everything may come to normal. That means your fasting comes to normal, the postprandial comes to normal. However, if the original sugars have been very, very high, then what do you do? Then you find that just increasing the basal is not enough. There comes a point where the fasting may come to normal, but the postprandials do not correct themselves, at which time you realize that you need to give something more. And something more is always in the form of prandial insulin that you need to give. By prandial insulin, I mean something to take care of the postprandial sugars. When you want to take care of the postprandial sugars, you again have two choices. You have a choice of changing over to a premixed insulin, or you have a chance of starting a rapid acting analog at the major meal of the day, or at some point, or at one meal of the day. Now, there have been studies which I'm going to show you when my AV does start. So I'm going to show you some studies which actually compare these two options that I've talked about. The options being starting of a premix to intensify therapy or to give a prandial one shot along with the basil. And it turns out that it is always better to try and do what we call basil plus. By basil plus, we mean you give one basal insulin and you give one shot at the, of prandial insulin at the largest meal of the day. So what will this do? This will bring down the HbA1c to goal much better as compared to shifting over the patient to a twice premixed insulin, as I'm going to show you. Secondly, the hypoglycemia is less. So both the things that you are worried about, that is glycemia, and the second thing being uh, the hypoglycemia, both the things are taken care of very well if you were to give a patient a basal plus as compared to a twice daily premixed. Basal plus is usually done with a rapid acting insulin and that's what we plan to do. Now, if the basal plus also does not work, then you have the option of going all the way and giving a physiological method 
of trying and giving insulin, and that is called the basal bolus therapy, which means you have tried basal, you've tried basal plus, and after basal plus, you find that you are still not at goal. The postprandial sugars are still not coming to normal. Then what do you do? You give the basal and you give a bolus at each and every meal. And once you have done that, you will find that the HbA1c starts to come down. Now, the important thing here is that it gives you a flexibility. You heard from Manoj in the previous lecture about the flexibility of giving the newer ultra long basal insulins so that is one part of it and the second part of it is that if you plan to give uh, insulin at every meal you again have that flexibility so it's flexibility convenience and physiology which drives the basal bolus or the basal plus therapy and here we are so i'm going to skip through some slides because i've already talked to you about that without the slides so the overview of my talk actually is about the need for intensification, which I've already talked to you about, how you do it, and then the basal prandial insulin regimen that is made easy with the different regimens that you have and what the evidence-based uh, recommendations are. So why do you need ins uh, insulin intensification? I told you the blood sugars are already high. Physiology drives it. There is a decline in the first phase of insulin secretion. And most importantly, that too in India, postprandial hyperglycemia. And this makes a significant contribution to the HbA1c and glycemic exposure overall. So the significance of postprandial glucose is known to all of us. We all know that it contributes to the HbA1c. We know that when you give a basal, the fasting is controlled, but the postprandial is not. And you know that postprandial hyperglycemia causes oxidative stress. There are studies that link it to cardiovascular disease. And because of all this, you will eventually need intensification of your basal insulin. And that's what we aim to do. So how do we do this? Why should we consider adding a prandial insulin? So I have given you some of the indications as to when you will start a prandial insulin. As I said, the first and foremost is you've given a basal insulin, but you're not getting your target postprandials. Then the other thing is that if your basal insulin dose keeps on increasing to a point that it exceeds 0.5 units per kg per day, that's probably the time that your patient needs prandial insulin. And if you increase the, uh, without starting a prandial insulin, if you just keep on increasing the basal insulin, there is a risk of hypoglycemia. And when the postprandial is consistently above goal, in spite of the fasting being at a normal level, that's the time that you know that you have to start a prandial insulin. And <clears throat> that you should not hesitate to start the prandial insulin because you're not going to get to goal otherwise. So as I said, the options are add a prandial insulin, which is basal plus, or you switch to premix insulin, as I already told you in my opening remarks. The basal prandial intensification, which we call basal plus, is actually the physiological way of doing it. And it closely mimics a normal pancreatic secretion, which is what we always aim to do. And basal insulin suppress glucose production by the liver between mealtimes and overnight as well. So if you give a premix, it's not going to take care of an entire 24 hours very well. And that is why the hepatic glucose suppression which needs to occur may not occur as it should. And prandial insulins control the surges. So that is what we know. So what you need to do is, when you want to give a basal plus, you obviously have to give one prandial first. So which one is that? At which meal do you give? So you decide which is the largest meal. Instead of just giving it ad hoc at breakfast or at lunch, if you try to find out which is the largest meal and give it at that time, you could be getting better results. And this study shows you that, that rather than giving it at breakfast, just ad hoc in general, if you were to actually identify the main meal and give it at that time, you get a much better A1C reduction as you can see in this particular slide. So studying what is the major meal of the day, what is the major excursion of the day, and institu institute the prandial insulin at that time, you are likely to get a much uh, better reduction of A1C. 
So this is again the same thing, the mean body weight change, and again it talks about the hypoglycemia as well. So if you identify the main meal and give the bolus accordingly, not only do you get a better A1C result, you will also get a better weight change, uh, you will also have less hypoglycemia, less severe hypoglycemia. So you can do an SMBG and actually find out which is the major meal of the day and start your bolus insulin at that time. So this was the OPAL study and it was uh, what I showed you now, and the key conclusions of this study were that a stepwise intensification of basal insulin with a single injection of rapid-acting insulin, like insulin glulyzine, could be considered in clinical practice, and that too, if given at the main meal, you could have much better A1C without the risk of hypoglycemia or a similar hypoglycemia risk. This is another study, the autonomy study, which actually compares the two self-titration algorithms for initiating and escalating prandial insulin. So here you have patients with type 2 diabetes with an A1C of 7 to 12. They are optimized with basal insulin. And in spite of that, if the A1C does not come below 7, then they are pushed into either study A or study B with addition of insulin Lispro 1, 2, 3, that is once, twice or thrice daily with adjustment coming, going from 1 to 3 times. And then what do we see? What we see here, as you can see in the slide up there, prandial insulin can effectively and safely be initiated by either of two self-titrated algorithms, either every day or every three days in a variety of practice settings. So does adding bolus prandial insulin benefit patients? So this is the Elinor study. And patient reported treatment satisfaction. Now, it is often said, in uh, favor of premix insulin, that it's a single insulin, so you have uh, the ease of giving the same insulin even for intensification. There's no question of starting one more insulin and all that. So convenience, quality of life, etc., was studied with the uh, uh, you know basal bolus regimen and the patient's uh, uh, DTSQ scores on general health as well as on patient satisfaction was seen. And what was found was that insulin glargine and glulyzine when given as basal bolus can positively affect the physical and psychological well-being and treatment satisfaction irrespective of the educational support system used. So this is what the study proves. So the basal bolus approach allows individualization of intensification and empowers self-management. So this is what a study showed, that the effectiveness and safety of self-titration of prandial insulin with basal insulin, glargine U100, and oral drugs. It requires no patient training on insulin correction factor or carbohydrate counting. It lowers the requirements of the oral drugs and improves patient satisfaction. And these are the important takeaways from this particular study. So where do we stand today? If you had to compare, because in your practice, I'm sure you come across this. You started basal, not getting enough uh, of your goals are not being reached, what do you do? So do you just suddenly switch to premix or do you do a basal bolus? So where do we stand with that today? So you have some of the world's best researchers talk to you about it, telling you, some studies tell you that they are equal, some studies say that basal bolus is better, and there is another study which shows you non-inferiority. So nowhere does a basal bolus actually fail in the sense that it, is, it may be non-inferior or it could even be superior or on par but not inferior. So that is the important takeaway from all the studies that I've shown you, that you are getting a more physiological kind of correction of your blood glucose with less hypoglycemia, good patient satisfaction, as you're seeing, and also convenient, and that is the important consideration when you want to uptitrate therapy. So this is again another study, which is again a comparison between premix uh, strategy and basal bolus for intensification. And what you find here is that it resulted again in similar percentages of well-controlled patients without hypoglycemia. So as I said, studies have shown that it is equal to or non-inferior or better. 
So it's, uh, but it is very, very physiological as compared to premix. So that is the important part to understand here. So this is again more evidence in the same vein where there was a comparison of three intensified insulin regimens added to oral therapy for type 2 diabetes. So in the first one, you had twice daily premixed, which is what we use very frequently. Then you had glargine plus one prandial, so that is basal plus. And then there you have a third one, which, is, which goes all the way, and that is basal bolus. So what you find here is that compared to the premix, both basal plus and basal bolus fared very, very well, especially in terms of glycemia as well as on the occurrence of hypoglycemia. So pre, this is the comparison again, which tells you the same thing, that premix may be difficult to implement. It fails to replace the physiological insulin. The ratio cannot be adjusted. It's a premixed insulin. So you could have patients who require more basal, less bolus, and vice versa, which you can do nothing about if it's premixed. But you can do it, tailor it to the patient's needs if you are doing it in basal plus or the basal bolus way because there is an ease of self-titration. There's a simple algorithm. So patient satisfaction I've already shown you and long-term adherence may be better. So when you move actually from basal plus, that means basal plus one prandial to all the way to basal bolus, you have to do that in type one diabetes. Please remember that Type 1 diabetes treatment cannot happen with premix insulin. It has, and it cannot even happen with basal uh, plus. It has to go all the way to basal bolus, and that's the best way of treating your type 1s. Then again, in advanced stages of type 2 diabetes, when insulin deficiency is so bad that every meal needs a prandial insulin, newly diagnosed patients with very severe hyperglycemia, again, every meal needs a prandial insulin. And again, patients who, uh, for whom you have to withdraw oral drugs. For example, nephropathy has occurred, you have to withdraw it. Uh, how much time do I have, I think? Yeah. Right. So basal bolus therapy versus premix, enough has been said about that. Then again, the co-formulations. So co-formulations, though they are not uh, by definition premix, but the ratios are fixed. So that is for sure. So the step-by-step -step trial actually compared IDAC asp or Glargine 100 plus ASPART in a treat-to-target trial to compare efficacy and safety. And what they found was a combination of insulin, Glargine, and prandial insulin, that is basal bolus, achieved similar glycemic control as that of the co-formulation. So that is the important uh, takeaway from that. And uh, let me skip this one. So the advantages of basal prandial uh, intensification are PPG excursions are prevented. There are fewer hypos because you can titrate the dose very well. And th that's why you also have lower weight gain. And you can titrate both basal and prandial separately, which is very, very desirable. So that's why it's more user friendly and it can be done in a stepwise manner. So this is the stepwise approach, basal prandial intensification approach, and all the criteria are fulfilled. It is a patient-centered approach. It takes care of the comorbidities and patient characteristics. Somebody cannot, somebody has nephropathy, somebody cannot take a particular drug, everything is considered, and it is personalized designer therapy and educating healthcare providers and patients to overcome the fear of the side effects such as weight gain and hypoglycemia with therapy intensification. So this is the stepwise approach, very, very easy. Uh, step one, step two, step three. So you use rapid acting analogs and not regular insulin. So you have less postprandial hyperglycemia. It can be taken up to 15 to 20 minutes, even after the start of the meal. Start with one shot at the largest meal, keep checking, and then you could add a second and a third. So there is enough evidence now for all that. You have all the different steps, which I won't go into the detail, the ADA, the ACE, our very own RSSDI, it tells you very clearly how to intensify basal insulin therapy. And we have to look at all these recommendations which endorse this view that basal bolus or basal plus at least is physiological, very doable, and patient friendly. 
So the key messages from my talk are timely basal intensification. It's critical for sustained glycemic control and mitigating metabolic legacy effects. Addition of prandial to basal insulin is more physiological, more patient friendly, and this is an effective alternative to the premixed intensification approach which we've been using for a very, very long time. Uh, thank you very much and sorry for that glitch initially when we did not have the slides. Thank you.